I'm going to start with this beer bottle and we're going to talk a little bit just about how glass and liquids refract light. Like that's the number one thing when you're shooting uh, beverages is they're all liquids and it's basically like shooting glass, um, even when it's just a liquid. <laughs> so as you see here, you know, as I run my hand behind this bottle, um, it's kind of copying whatever is behind it, but opposite. You can see my wedding ring there is on the left side of the bottle, but it reflects it on the right. So if I wanted to highlight on one side of the bottle, I got to put it on the other side. So the thing with this beer bottle, right, is it doesn't look very beer colored right now. It looks just like black because we're on this black background. Um, we could change the background color. And I think that's usually the first place to start, which is if you're gonna shoot on a black background, you know that it's gonna go really black. So shoot on a white background. Well, I'm just gonna show you that real quick. So by just making this simple change, suddenly this beer bottle has a nice glow coming up behind it. As you see, we're still getting, you're like, oh, what's this little sparkly light over here? This is actually the windows across the room over that way. And if you see this really dark area, that is the dark side of the room that's back this way. Um, we could fix that. So that, that is because the size of our background isn't big enough to cover our drink. There you go. So as you saw when I was moving that around too, that the shape of this highlight here was changing. And that's because the light hitting the background is also changing. As you, the background gets closer to the light, it's becoming a harder light. And as it gets further away, it becomes softer. So I'm gonna actually just show you a little bit of that and see the effect that moving this light around has on our drink. See, and you'll see in commercials, like sometimes people like a little gradation like this. Sometimes they like it to be big and soft and even. Um, you could also tilt this up and down if you wanted this light at the top or light at the bottom. Um, and we could even move this light further away. Right now I'm kind of pinned into the, where I'm at right here, so I can't go too much further. Um, but you know that alone shows you how just the light on the background will change the light on your beer bottle or your you know any of these glasswares will kind of do the same thing. Um, but there's a way to get around that. And you could have a little more control over this. So this bottle right here looks beautiful. Um, I actually used what's called dulling spray. Um, I don't know if that's totally blown out or not, but here you go. And um, this is basically kind of like a, like a spray on fog kind of diffusion. So we use this a lot and I, you can pick this up on Amazon. You can pick it up at Home Depot sometimes. It's, it's just something you can find around um, and one can last a long time. So I would definitely say pulling one of those up. So the key though, is you have to tape off the bottle uh, before you spray it. Cause you don't want the front to be dulled. You just want the back to be dulled to do your diffusion for you. You can also see that I taped a line here at the water level. Cause technically you don't want to see that the back is sprayed. And once you get past the liquid level you will not see that very well. Um, and I'm gonna peel this off and I'm gonna show you in camera here, the difference between these two. So this is our original bottle. Um, and then this is our, you know, there's still a little tape there. You know, so obviously the front is the dull side you see. And as I spin it around, you know, boom. So now you see how that is diffusing the light behind it and it's no longer as kind of hard and crisp. So now as I move this around, you see those highlights are just a lot softer and a lot prettier. Um, so that's actually a really great way to go. The other thing you could learn from here, right? If I backlit the, the drinks too, here I have a light that's coming straight into these drinks, right? And we do this all the time. So this is giving us um, a really good example to show why we do this. You see how the one that has no dulling spray on it is just still black and just totally see-through, where the one with dulling spray is doing a really nice job of catching that hard light from behind and making a really beautiful glow. The next trick I'm gonna show you on these is
let's say you don't have enough lights to have a light back there and a light over here. And you know, a lot of you might just have a flashlight or whatever you have. Um, you could actually use this one light that I have up above here, uh, which is actually lighting my bottle in the foreground. Um, and then you can use um, a little reflective card. So I'm gonna ping, ping you the camera right there. Boom, you can see how reflective this is. Um, this comes in these, uh, they're called show cards and they come in these large sheets and you just cut it down to what you need to do. Um, and the use of this is, boom, look at that. So I could hide this kind of behind a bottle and then this light is like way too bright for to be doing this. So I'm gonna put that down. So you see, by, and then I could bring this right up to the back of my thing. This card might be a little big, uh, but you could just trim that down or I'll just do it real quick. Here. And it's easy enough to trim it down for whichever shoot you're doing. So there we go. So then as I tilt this back, you see here, I could catch a lot of light or just a little bit of light. And I could really tweak that, I can move it left to right. And that really moves that, that whole thing around. And now my background is independent from the lighting on my drink. So that's a really cool thing about this. Um, you could even like really spot this in, uh, this light and block the light hitting the bottle itself. And literally it's only gonna be lighting the card behind it. Um, this to me is a little strong. Like actually, if I show you here, you see how really like, whoo, that's like super strong ping that we're getting from this um, reflective material here. So I like this one that's called Florentine, which is a little softer. It's kind of, it, has, it still has that nice reflectiveness, but it also is not so uh, super strong like a mirror. It really depends on what you're shooting. Like if you have a really dark liquid, you might need to really blast it with light and use something a little bigger. Um, actually, this is the one I designed for this right here. Uh, so I would still have to trim it a little more. Um, and that light is still a little bright, in my opinion. Yeah, so there you go. So that light is just putting on a beautiful light to make my beer glow. And then if we had not done the Dolan spray, just to show you, you know, it's a lot harder to make it look right. So um, as you see, it literally is not forgiving. Like a, a clear liquid like this um, really reflects everything that we do. So then the next conversation we could have now that that's good there is let's talk about our background. Do we want this to be a dark background? Do we want it to be a light background? Um, as you see, I have a light here that I can move around and I could do different effects. I could have it come from below uh, more. Uh, if I kind of want this like horizon light, we could put a gel on this to color it. Uh, we could really spot this in. Uh, this is a nice Fresnel attachment that this light has here. Um, you know, if we wanted to kind of create a glow around that. Normally I might have this more under the table shooting right back at the wall if I wanted like a perfect circle. Um, and then at this point too, I could still bring in this edge light. You know, as you see, it still affects the reflection on the drink. Uh, but let's say we want to put a nice little line on the side of the glass right there. And my doubling spray can is getting in the way. But right there, that gives us a pretty nice edge light on the side of this bottle um, over here. You see this right here? That edge light right there is pretty nice. Um, we could... Um, so this is a, just a piece of plexiglass. It's like a frosted white plexiglass. Um, so you see by bringing this in here, it really made a, a nice soft edge around that bottle versus this super hard edge we had. As you see though, like I need to be pretty close to this depending how big of a soft highlight I want to have on there. Um, these, the, the head and the shoulders of the, the bottle always causes some problems if you wanna keep a continuous line because it breaks pretty quickly because I would have to technically be like have a bigger card, taller card if I wanted that to connect all the way. Oh yeah, and some of you might be wondering what these here are. Uh, these are called frogs. They use for uh, making flower arrangements. <laughs> They're like heavy, they have these pins on them. They're great, you can pick them up at any kind of like Michael's or I think places like that, any, any sort of uh, craft store that does fake flowers and stuff like that. So these are really helpful because as you see, I'm using them to hold my card over here. They hold, they're great because you can just stab whatever you want into them. Um, I don't think it would hold my plexiglass. You would have to actually get a stick. Uh, if I wanted to hold 
that in there. And same thing, you could, you, you'd use this to diffuse the light from the top of the can. Um, you could have, and, and once again, it's tools that you could find fairly easily. Um, it's not, and as far as what light you're using, like we're having to use these aperture lights, like these could literally be like high power flashlights or whatever lights you could find around, like any sort of hard light, you know, you could really shape it and we'll be doing more classes talking about specifically that. Um, so the next part of this one is getting into the cold condensation we want on the front of the bottle, right? Like this looks like a really dry, not so refreshing beer right now. And we wanted this to be refreshing. So there's a couple ways you could go about it. You could find there's these like Evian mist bottles that just spray water. Um, it's kind of like this, you know, if you find it like a pharmacy or, you know, store like that. Water mist or you could bottle sprayer like that you could find even for like, you know, Windex or whatever, any household cleaning products, those might work. Just you want something with a pretty fine mist. Um, I also use these. Uh, these actually just like charge whatever liquid you have in here and it sprays it back out. So if I do this, you know, it's gonna get the water and make the water come out like right there. So um, the cool thing about that is I could also actually add other things to this to not be just water. Um, what, what else would I add? Basically, um, the number one thing we use is called glycerin. Uh, you can find this also at a hardware store. Uh, so glycerin thickens the water and makes those dew drops be a lot rounder and kind of prettier. Uh, water itself, depending on the surface you're on, might just like kind of run off pretty quickly. Um, the nice thing about glycerin too is it also sticks around for a while. So you spray water in five minutes, the, the bottle might be dry again. With glycerin, it might last 10 or 15 minutes. Um, or if it, you have a concentration enough of glycerin, it'll just stay there all day. Uh, so depending on the, the kind of shots we're doing, we'll definitely mix glycerin in. Um, I'll actually show you because so this this little spray bottle I have has like 50% glycerin, 50% water. Uh, so it's kind of a nice balance of getting some nice dewy round bits uh, compared to straight water. So I'm gonna do one of these bottles with the glycerin and one with the other water spray. Uh, so this is the, actually, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna make the less pretty bottle, the, the water spray. Um, and then, you know, you wanna watch your camera when you're doing this. Come on, there it goes. Uh, great. So you could also see we didn't fully pull the label off of this thing. Um, so there's a little glue still on there. But you see that it's a, it's a pretty natural um, effect that we're getting there as far as what happens when condensation really happens. Um, and sometimes you want to hit certain areas a little more. Uh, but I do like this drip like right here in the bottom. That's kind of nice that's going on here. Um, and then one thing you might be seeing is like, oh wait, but it would be nice to see that a little better. Um, so this is just a foam core that I have, I picked up from um, art supply store. Um, so you're not gonna have a very good view here, but um, by bringing this down here as just a bounce card, you know, it really kind of starts separating those little uh, water droplets from the bottle, um, which is great. Um, the other option would be just bringing this light around the top a little bit more, um, in which case, you see it starts really picking up highlights on all these drops up here. You also see the round surface of my light. So it's not, you know, the perfect answer. I mean, if we diffuse this a little bit, you know, it becomes, yeah, there you go. A nice little softer highlight there that brings out just some of those um, water droplets. Um, so, but for comparison, I'm gonna do the glycerin water mix. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, you want to be careful not to spray your dulling spray, which I just did. <laughs> so uh, when you do this, you got to be a little more careful with that. But as you can see there, you see how different those water drops are really showing up. Like these are like definitely holding up a little, a little bigger um, than the, and this is actually already evaporating away this water. So the cool thing with that is, is exactly that, that you could really get some nice, beautiful droplets on there. Um, I think I can even cheat here and show you yeah, there we go. <laughs> a little closer what we have going on here. Uh, you know, we, there we go, how close do we wanna go? Um, but there you can really see the difference between the different types of water drops, uh, which is kind of great. Um, and then, you know, if this, this applies not to just the beer, it's pretty much anything in a bottle, you know, is, is the same thing. 
Um, and the reality is also is it also applies to glassware. So anybody making cocktails or uh, if you want to promote your bar or you're a bartender and you want to make some cool cocktails and rocks glasses or different things, um, this same thing applies. Um, obviously, drinks that are not cold should not be condensated. So something to consider. And also, you know, I actually kind of did it, you know, because I'm just so used to doing it here. You know, there shouldn't be too much condensation above the liquid line because that's fake, right? So condensation happens right at the liquid line. So keep that in mind when you're spraying. Uh, you could, you know, you could say, oh, this was in a cooler, so the whole thing got wet, and you know, there's ways around that. But basically, um, keep in mind that you know you should you should uh, follow the laws of physics when doing this, and make sure that your condensation matches reality. Um, I want to show you the same example on a glass, and with that, it brings up other questions and answers and solutions here. So, basically, here is a clean, empty glass this out and with a clear glass um you know same thing you're going to see right through it um i actually have an example here i dulling sprayed a glass as well the dulling spray it's, it's pretty awesome it dries pretty quickly uh, so i still have a few of my fingerprints on it uh, cool so something like that so here it doesn't look that different, right? Because we're on this white background and everything's getting all blown out. But when we go here, I'm actually gonna remove this backlight, you know, so there you can really see the dulling spray glass for the regular glass. Um, we could light the black background here to give us a little glow. Um, yeah, the black isn't always for black. Black actually makes a nice glowing surface to blow out. You would need a little more light, you know, power. I could turn this power up. Um, but usually just having one nice light from behind really makes things glow really nicely. Um, so the next conversation here is, well, Steve, what if I'm pouring a beer into a glass with the dulling spray here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that because you'd see that it's already pre-dulled. So the reality is when you're, you know, and this happens to us all the time, you're, you, you're always pouring something <laughs> in the work we do. So with that, you can't dulling spray a glass if you're gonna do a fresh pour, it just, it won't work unless you know that you're gonna stop, you're gonna be just getting a certain part of that pour. Um, so a lot of times the, the good thing is while you're doing a, a pour action is that things move really quickly and there's bubbles and there's things that kind of dulled the liquid for you. Um, so, you know, as an example here, um, yeah, let me pour a beer. Uh, so this is a fun uh, local Brooklyn IPA here. So, you know, being an IPA, it's probably gonna be a little foggier and you'll see that um, with that, I'm gonna pour a little bit into each glass and, um, Actually, hold on one second. So Dan, I'm gonna to wanna to end trigger this. Yeah, cool. So we are, I'm gonna do a pour here. We're actually gonna play back this slow motion for you too. So, as you see, it's so foggy that you don't necessarily see the fact that you're missing that dulling spray. Um, and it's actually showing you pretty cl clearly that this is uh, an IPA, it's a little foggy and um, so what I'm going to do here, um, actually, don't don't trigger that yet. I'm going to make it look a little look a little better. Um, and you always have to test. You always have to test with real liquid um, before you do, um, you know, your hero pour. So I'm going to give that a nice glowy light from behind. Um, I want my head to be a little nicer in the front. Go. So I'm going to let this head light die down a little bit. And then we're actually going to do a slow motion for finishing the pour. Because a lot of times, like as you see right here, as we start with, with it, uh, we start with it, uh, you know, from the, from the beginning, some beers are going to be just like so heady, it doesn't look that good. You want it to make sure that it's looking pretty great. Uh, well, yeah, just beer everywhere. 
Welcome to my life. Um, so I'm gonna give that a second to settle a little more. Um, one thing about pouring, um, you gotta pour hard, uh, usually. Pouring really soft, like if I just did this and I was like, oh look, gentle little pour. It doesn't look like the commercials you see. <laughs> we, we pour actually really hard a lot of the times because you want that liquid to really be swirling and moving around and you want it to be kind of exciting, right? So um, that being said, if, if you poured hard a whole beer, it would just overflow, it'd be all head, it just wouldn't look like beer. So with here, uh, we're just gonna, you know, do a little hard pour and top this off and then Dan's gonna trigger this and we'll, we'll see it in slow motion. You ready, Dan? All right, here we go. And, and the, keep in mind also the angle of the pour, like there's a difference between pouring to the camera versus pouring from the side as far as what the liquid does. Cause you know, if you're pouring towards us, it kind of comes down and you know, it's fluid dynamics. Um, so I'm gonna try to pour towards camera and here we go. I'm gonna let that settle. Pretty and trigger. So we're gonna play that back for you. And two, this is 240 frames per second which is what a, an iPhone is capable of doing. You'll see it's pretty slow. Yeah, that's fine there. Yep. You know, um, I mean, we're cheating in that our camera is fancier and obviously gonna be a little sharper and, you know, more professional, but there's $5,000 cameras now in the market, like Kronos camera, and there's a free fly camera that do amazing slow motion and they're not as crazy as this, you know, $100,000 camera. But then actually the rate of slow motion is the same. I could have done that on my iPhone and the, the, the speed at which the bubble settled and everything um, would be the same. The crazy thing here is that like, this is almost too slow right now. Like it's fine for the hard pour, but here you're like, who has time to wait for this beer to settle? I want to drink it. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I'm actually going to just pop this off a little bit. Want to go live again? Yeah. So, and then, you know, if you're shooting a finished beer, you obviously want to make sure your head looks great. So there's, you kind of have to sometimes give it a little, uh, take care of it a little bit. yeah, that's a very full beer. And then, you know, you could do the same thing with this where you use our glycerin to give it a little bit of condensation and that makes it nice and cold and dewy feeling. I'm gonna try to get a little more highlight. Uh, ooh, that's a little too much highlight with this you know so we could adjust you know we're showing you more frame than we need to right now oh boy that's a good thing there we could put a nice little highlight on the front of the can the glass right there um you know what we could get into more in-depth lighting a little later but i think for right now we want to just make sure this beer feels refreshing and you know you keep in mind all that we've been talking about uh, i'm going to actually move this light back overhead For a little more drama um, and then also show you guys remember these things um, so you could use these if you wanted to make it feel a little more summery a little bit more glowy you know compared to the light that we're getting from behind um, this all still applies um, you know you got to keep in mind like what's accurate to the real beer color you know like this this beer is helping us because it's a little foggy so it doesn't need as much work because um, otherwise you'd want to use this filling spray glass instead. So, um, but that would be for the finished drink. The next thing I want to show, get into though, I think we've had enough beer for now, um, you know, and you know, you guys should buy Jaeger too, um, because they're, they're helping support all of this. Um, but I'm going to pull this offset. And I just want to do, before we get into the other clear glass, I want to take a little sidestep and just talk about, um, condensation on, on cans, because it's a little different, uh, things to consider. Um, so you need to also, you know, here, I'm gonna turn off that light. So this is literally just our light um, from the right edge. And this is actually being diffusion for us. And so cans are also reflective, but they're reflective in a different way. Um, this Stella can, as an example, is like incredibly like a mirror basically so it's if you want to put these like nice edge lights on the back of your can you'd have to have the foam pour somewhere and this uh 
Pexy somewhere back here. Um, or sometimes just the hard light could do it nicely. But you see on the Pepsi can on the left, how that highlight is getting a little bigger and smaller. Um, same thing over there, just as a bounce, it actually does a nice job. But to be able to, basically to get the light on the front of the can is really challenging because your camera is somewhere. <laughs> so you're like, oh, this is the perfect place for the diffusion is right in the front. Um, so sometimes we actually do a bigger sheet and we actually cut a hole out for the lens and we put that right up front because um, it's the best way to get the most reflection in your can um, and without obviously losing um, all your light. <laughs> so um, for this, I wish I had one more stand, but I'll make it work here. I'm gonna move this to be more of my key light. So yeah, just to give you, for those that don't know, some technical terms, your main light is your key light, which is usually you know the main product light that's lighting your foreground. Um, edge lights are lights that come kind of from the sides. Sounds like it, the edges that highlight the edges of something. And then there's background lights that hit the background itself. So this is my background light over here that's giving me that glow. Um, so for this, I wanted to bring in that light and I want to take this and show you a little bit of how, um, not quite low enough here, one second. And guys throw, throw any questions in the chat if you have. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Okay. Um, yeah, good question. So it, it's always about what makes the particular product look the most important or ties to the story you're trying to tell. You know, people are like, story, it's a can. Oh, what, what could there be a story? Like, you know, like just an example of this. Is there, if like it's an energy drink, you think of this like heroic low angle of, you know, making this seem like a larger than life experience, a larger than life thing. Um, if it was like a rose, in a can, you might not have that same feeling. It might want to be like, you know, just a little more natural, neutral angle. Um, and then, you know, once you come start coming higher, if you want to start showing the tab um, and stuff like that, um, by doing that, it is going to make the can less important. So just it's just basically about how do you want the, the users to perceive the drink that you're shooting. Um, same thing with a, a, a beer glass or whatever it is. It's also something to consider when you're when you're dealing with these reflections, like what I'm playing with right here. So if I was at a high angle, this wouldn't be reflecting this card. It actually would be reflecting this the floor, the surface. So it'd be almost impossible to get a real edge light unless I was just it was on a light colored surface. Um, and same thing if I get really high, I really low and heroic, I actually have to be kind of more up here with my diffusion. Um, so you know, rem remember it's a relationship of low camera angle your light has to be in a different place than the other way around, so. Um, doling spray on labels. Well, you wouldn't really use it on the label. Yeah, I mean, it's only for the glass part of things. Like, oh yeah, actually that's a, you know, that brings up an interesting thing because we pulled all the labels off this. So traditionally, if let's say I, I, this had a branded label on the front of it, I would want to pull the back label off anyway you know, so that, that that doesn't reflect back in my imagery. So I would basically only want to keep the front main label on and take off the back label and then delving spray the back of it only. Um, so that I think maybe kind of answers that question. Um, doling spray could also be used if you wanted this kind of like cold frosty feeling on stuff too. Like you actually could use it in the foreground of the can because like this can, this Pepsi can that you see is like super reflective right there. Um, but as you see this kind of gives you a really nice glow on that Pepsi right there um so you know and you see it's a really challenging thing i can't like i would need a huge light source far away to kind of make that same reflection happen so like with a, a small card like this you got to bring it like super super close to the pepsi can and as you see depending on how i aim my light i have control over that gradation of that highlight um both you know side to side and also top to bottom if i, I was tilting it up and down you can see i can move that um highlight up and down. So, you know, it's like shooting mirrors. It's definitely fun. Um, one thing that helps a little bit in this particular case, which is why I wanted to do this, is uh, condensation isn't always just good for um, showing cold appetite appeal, refreshment, all those things. It's also really good for diffusing light. <laughs> so like, as you see this Pepsi can right here, it's like, bing, 
right here, that reflection is really hard. Um, but if I use, let's say, my just even my water spray, uh, yeah, you see how that just softened that reflection also. So it's kind of a two for one special where um, you get the uh, the condensation you want, but you also get um, you know a nicer diffused can. You see that it's almost like you're spraying diffusion onto the can. Um, and now if I still do if I do the same thing I was doing before that also starts becoming a really nice mix of the edge light with this front light, um, giving it a nice glow. So, um, but, and it depends on the brand and, you know, like some brands want to be full summery day. So this doesn't make sense. Like this foggy softer thing isn't something that they want to want to use. If they want sunny, then using the condensation to diffuse it is kind of a, a little trick that helps out. Um, but one, what I wanted to show here too, is the, the water versus the, um, uh, glycerin here, uh, you're gonna need this to really see the difference. Uh, the glycerin also runs slower. If it's a mix, this is 50% water um, and glycerin. So you see you have that drop coming down this Stella uh, can. And that's, you know, we've all seen that shot a thousand times and, and it's something that we often do. And a lot of times it's just, we do this, give it a little spray and wait for a drip to happen just like that, you see. Uh, so the good thing is the glycerin will keep things a little more uh, sparkly uh, when we do that. Um, wow, we've been talking for a while already. Look at this, time is flying. Um, cool, so I'm gonna move on to the next thing before we get into more questions, because there's just one last thing um, I want to definitely show you. Um, and this is the idea of a drink with ice in it, right? So um, I should have gotten some real other ice, but it's okay, and this is the only other glass I have. So, um, Drinks, if you see soda commercials and stuff like that, Pepsi as an example, um, we very often use fake ice or what's called acrylic ice. Um, so um, this stuff is actually kind of expensive to get some really nice stuff. Like these are kind of cheaper cubes, these square ones. Um, I'm actually gonna do this as a, as to show you the difference. This is a really fancy expensive cube here. Uh, I'm focus on that. So this is actually, made out of a single piece of acrylic that actually somebody actually carves this then polishes it and that's why it looks so perfectly sparkly and nice um and that is kind of really these are like 50 dollars each or something crazy um but it looks so amazing like if you put they have different sizes and shapes um some of these are also poured epoxy too so they actually have a mold and they pour them with epoxy i think there's actually an epoxy molded one here um they also have like shards like this one. So this is like different kind of shaped ice as if you had chipped a big block of ice, which is actually really pretty. Um, and then these are kind of the more generic uh, here. Um, and you'll see they, you know, it's the thing with the fake cubes that they're all the same exact size. They sometimes really stack in a perfect line. Like you see what's going on there, which is a little challenging. So having different size cubes is always a great idea. Um, on the other side, this is actually rubbery, you know, bing, bing, yeah, you can see here. So this is actually like a, a poured uh, epoxy kind of thing as well, uh, that you, it turns into a big block and then you chip it up and we could, you know, we can give links to some of this stuff for you. But as you see, it's like super sparkly. You have control over the shapes of it. Like this starts as a big block and you just kind of break it up. Um, so you could have like little bits and you could have other bits. The downside to this stuff is actually it floats, um, which is, well, could be good or bad. Um, this stuff all sinks, it stays at the bottom of the glass. So just to show you, I will use this Pepsi here. Show you what's going on here. Ooh, look at that beautiful light coming through those fake cubes. Um, and I'll do this one. Ooh, look at that sparkly light. So eventually this will actually, if I fill it up enough, you see them start floating there. Yeah, you see in the, the good and bad thing about that is eventually you end up with a dark spot down at the bottom, but it is more natural. It's more like real uh, soda is. Um, and then it's always good to kind of spin your glass to find the most perfect, you know, point for the light. Uh, but you see, these are actually both looking pretty nice, you know, but you see the difference, like this reacts more like real ice. Um, and this you could tell is a little more fake kind of QB ice. Um, 
it's good to have, you know, if you're trying to be doing this, like it's good to have a huge collection of all of it as much as you can. Um, but you see with this, I didn't, like this is literally, um, yeah, that's, this is literally one light that's, that's lighting this scene right now. So this is literally just, well, I guess there's the background light a little bit, but that's not really having much of an effect on our drink. So this is really just this one light that's hitting it from behind. Um, and I'm actually gonna walk this to show you, like, so if I come more behind it, you get some nice flare too. Um, but if I come too much to the side, once I'm here, it just, it just really goes flat. So there's just, there's a, just the sweet spot. Um, and as I go lower, you see it kind of really sparkles more at the bottom uh, versus the top. So, you, you know, you, you want to play around with whatever light you're using. Um, a lot of times going straight from behind is really beautiful. If you didn't want the flare, I could probably, you know, block my lens off somehow, but right now, um, yeah, all right, where is it? Come on, Claire. There you go. Somewhere in there. Uh, there you go. So you could get that really nice dramatic light, uh, but not get the flare. But the flare is kind of going to kind of nice. I don't mind it. Um, so, but then you know, if you did want some of those droplets on the front, you're going to want a little bit of light from the front too to really catch the condensation and the droplets and the little more sparkle in the ice. Um, but and then you know, same thing. If we're going all in here, you could. You know, add a little condensation to it. And whoo, nice, cold, refreshing Pepsi. Um, go in closer there so you can see the difference between the two ice cubes and kind of how they read. I actually personally like this ice right here for this particular shot we're, we're doing. I feel like the sparkle coming through it is really nice. Um, I broke my own rule and I put condensation above. <laughs> The line, but you can use Q-tips and stuff to kind of clean some of that up um, as you go. Um, but as you see there, it looks pretty great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the same thing with this goes if, if you wanted to pour it just like halfway and then do a pour as well. Um, let me actually pour some of this out. not gonna be the most perfect, but it'll look be nice enough. So let's say we're here. All right, so um, Dan, let's trigger this one again. All right, here we go. There you go and trigger. So another thing to consider when we're shooting these kinds of fizzy bit beverages, is you really wanna get that fizz at the top. Um, that's where this back edge lighting really works really well because it's really putting an edge on those little drops as they fly up into the air. Uh, I'm really a master pourer, but you know, a lot of times we have the robots do it for us. <laughs> um, so you know, we we would have cleaned up the glass a little better because obviously uh, we would start with a fresh glass probably every take. Uh, but there's something nice about the fact that this ice moves. Um, whew, that actually flew over the top. So then you can see here um, how you get those little fizz bits flying off the top. Um, one little trick, um, if your soda is not fizzy enough, is you put a little alka seltzer in it. <laughs> um, you could also use salt. Pouring a little salt into it also makes the, the carbonation really kind of come alive. Um, so it's definitely some tricks that we use for, for doing that. Um, Cool, questions? <laughs> sure, great. I try to be as clean as possible because post, oh, sorry. Repeating the question. Uh, somebody's asking like when I shoot, do I try to make the, the frame as clean as possible or do we just leave rigs and other bars and things holding like cans or whatever in the frame and they just cut them out in post-production. And the reality is post-production costs money. Um, so we usually try to make things as clean as possible, even if it's just like it's being poured and whatever is holding the thing is taped black to match our black background. At least it's a lot cleaner and easier to do. Um, green screen is another possibility to try to key things out. Um, but yeah, no, we try to be as clean as possible in what we do. Uh, well, in general, it's macro lenses because 
we're usually very tight to things. Uh, this is a Zeiss CP2 macro 50 millimeter lens. They don't make this anymore, um, unfortunately, but you can buy them used on eBay. That's how we, we bought some other lenses of ours as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like to be 50 or wider, generally speaking, um, just for drama. You know, like the, the longer the lens is, the more it just kind of compresses all the angles. And these are all things we'll, we'll teach as part of the garage learning for those that have subs subscribed uh, from, you know, so it, it's just understanding purpose. You know, basically everything we're doing is about, like I'm doing this for a reason, I'm doing this for a reason. Like, so with that, whichever lens you're choosing is also for a good reason. So you're, you're using a 50 macro because you want to have a kind of a normal perspective and you want to be able to get really close to things. Um, or you're using like a 24 millimeter uh, because you want to have something feel more wide angle and a little more, you know, like uh, basically making whatever's in the foreground more important than whatever's in the background. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Let's do it. Uh, hello. Uh, let me get a light on it too, maybe. <laughs> So we'll show it in extreme macro here. There we go. So this has a bunch of little spikes on it. Yeah, and we sometimes we'll use, you'll see there's some wax in there. So sometimes we'll use some wax to stick things to this too. Um, but yeah, they're, I believe the technical term for these is called frogs. Um, and then also, you know, while we're here, I'll show you the two different material. So this is the super reflective card that we used earlier. And then this is the less reflective. You really see that finish is kind of different. So yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm not, you know, selling these other uh, people are asking about slow motion cameras that I mentioned earlier. So um, I haven't actually used either of these myself, but these are pretty new to the market. Um, one is the Kronos 2.1. Um, it's a uh, it's like a five thousand dollar up to a thousand frame a second. So the same thing this camera does. Uh, camera is like this big. It's tiny. Um, it looked like the footage I've seen coming off of it looks pretty awesome. I know the, the workflow is is a little challenging, uh, but once again, if it gets the job done, that's all that really matters. The other one is FreeFly Systems just put out a little camera too, designed for for actually for drone slow motion drone work. That's also pretty small and it does up to 480 frames a second, I believe. Um, and it can actually record kind of continuously, which is great. Um, so those are two, I mean, you know, honestly the iPhone is a really good slow motion camera. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna give it a hard time because it, it actually does a pretty amazing job. And then if you have one of the newer ones with like the super wide lens, it's kind of amazing. I mean, I could get like, I would have to have a really complicated system in the pro level to do a very similar looking shot just with the phone. So. Um, and just so you guys know, all our beginning courses uh, for the garage learning start with using your phone. That, that's like what they're all completely designed about. We're not expecting you to have any of these crazy lights or anything like that. Uh, so cool. Uh, <laughs> and yes, and for the pros and the, the intermediates, it, we actually have in-person workshops here in Brooklyn as well, starting up in June. Any other questions? We're going to have to wrap up in a couple minutes. but. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, does a robot pouring look robotic? Um, and how you overcome that is actually by prog programming it not to feel robotic, you know? So, you know, it, when you think about it, like the, like the process of pouring as a human is really complicated. Like you think about it like, oh, I just do this. But when you really think about what you're doing, you're moving in, you're doing this, you're pouring, you know, it's almost done. You're going to adjust to come out. You know, it, it's actually kind of an intricate thing. Um, but we've done it enough that we understand that like we start here, you start here, you kind of put that in, you kind of arc, arc back out and you, you do that. Um, actually, you know, not to like de defer away a little bit, but uh, Mark Roberts motion control that makes the, the robots we use actually has a new iPhone beta app. So I could actually put the iPhone as the, on the cam, do the pour and the motion of the phone will actually program the robot, which is really, really, really cool. We'll be showing some demos on this soon. So the cool thing is that you could actually either program the camera like this, or it could actually put it on the object and do that. And then it'll literally 
do exactly what I did, which is kind of awesome. Um, I am at F4. Uh, people were asking what f-stop I'm at. Um, F4 on the camera lens um, is where I'm at um, on this 50 millimeter macro. So as you see, you know, if I open up, that's wide open on this lens, which is 2.1, and then you know things get super sharp as I stop down from there. So yeah, that's where I was at. Oh, uh, when I'm looking for people, part of my team, um, what am I looking for? That's the question. Uh, we're looking for people that have skills that we don't have, generally speaking. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of skills. Our team, you know, is really powerful. We have, you know, people that do special effects rigging and production and, you know, you know, lighting and everything. So if we're looking for to hire a new full-time person, it's basically somebody that knows something we don't know, like 3D animation or, you know, graphic design or other things that we, because we're trying to fill in our weaknesses with people that have really great strengths. Um, as far as like lower end people that we hire, like interns and stuff like that, it's usually somebody with a amazing attitude that somebody that really wants to be here, wants to learn, wants to be helpful, and realizes that it's gonna take them a long time to get to where they wanna be. The number one negative we've had with interns is people that are like, I wanna do this and be able to do what you're doing like next month. And it's like, no, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. So it like, and I'm not trying to sound like, oh, this old guy thinks he knows you know everything. I'm literally trying to say that it takes a lot of time and practice to learn how to do this really well, you know, and you could tell the difference. Like you see the ads done by people just starting out and they look okay and they can look pretty good, but you, you, that same person a year later, a year later, a year later, their work's just going to continually get better as they learn and they practice and they do jobs and they fail and they succeed, you know, and just embrace that as part of the process. Like you're not going to get here in two years, but you could get ahead of where you are right now, you know, every day. So you know, I think it's about applying the knowledge and learning and, you know, taking, you know, lessons from YouTube, lessons from our garage learning that we're going to be doing. Um, and just realize that this is a, this is a, a journey of learning. Like I'm not, I, I'm still learning every day. <laughs> I say the same thing about my own work. Like, I'm like, oh, I shot that two years ago. Ooh, that wasn't so good. And now it's just like, oh, right. Okay. That makes sense. Like, uh, like every job I do is going to be better the next time, the next time. So realize that but um cool we're gonna wrap up uh thank you guys all for joining us we're gonna be doing these once a month uh so watch us on instagram uh at the garage learning or steve draw i always announce it as well um for when the next events are uh, make sure you check out the garage learning.com check out the other meister drop-ins on jaeger um and the save the night page uh, which i believe is save dash the night.com something like that uh, i'm not sure if you google it you find it because it's really cool that jaeger has basically put money into artists like us to give back to the world community because uh, a lot of bars and restaurants are struggling and they want to try to give back by giving them education so they could do other things um, until things return back to normal. Um, so yeah, we'll see you next month. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please reach out with any questions. We're always here to, to help. Um, and on the next one, we're actually going to be tying in a few of our kits that we make as part of the garage learning too. We're not just teaching lighting and cinematography, but we're also teaching you how to do the technical stuff of making lights yourself, uh, making rigs yourself, making catapults and all sorts of fun stuff. So we're gonna kind of keep introducing those things as we go, but for this first one, we just wanted to make it about making cool images. Thank you so much. We're gonna cut out the feed and we will see you all next time. Uh, take care, stay safe. <laughs>